A very good evening. You're watching the 7 o'clock news broadcast live by Bahrain International with me, Danielle Deporto. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Gudebiya Palace a number of senior officials, journalists, and businessmen to discuss local and international affairs. His Royal Highness hailed patriotism and sincerity in working on the development and prosperity of Bahrain, stressing the importance of maintaining and strengthening national unity to preserve the country's achievements. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the Kingdom has always been and will remain a nation accepting of all due to its citizens' values of coexistence and peace. He pointed out that the world is currently facing rapidly changing circumstances, especially in the information and communications field, and called for the leveraging of these advances in all that serves the nation's interests. His Royal Highness noted the role of journalists and media figures in informing public opinion on various issues of the nation and the region, and expressed pride in the development of Bahraini journalism.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Gudebiya Palace the President and members of the General Authority for Husseini Processions, headed by the Dean, Ibrahim Mansour al Mansour, who submitted to His Royal Highness a report on the role of the leadership in supporting religious practices. The report also included a historical glimpse into His Royal Highness's interest in religious affairs and organizations. His Royal Highness affirmed that the kingdom, throughout its, its hist throughout its history, has been a model for brotherhood and social cohesion. The authority's members expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his continuous support for social affairs, especially those of religious organizations. He hailed the importance of religious events in enhancing solidarity amongst people, noting the role of places of worship and their religious status in maintaining unity and consolidating the values and principles of Islam. The Prime Minister urged all concerned parties to facilitate religious events and support their role in enhancing cooperation, commending the collaboration of Matams and Husseiniyat with government bodies in organizing Husseiniyat processions. He stated that ensuring the freedom of conducting religious practices stemmed from Islamic values and principles. His Royal Highness praised the efforts of the authority members in reviving religious seasons and consolidating cultural and social heritage in the kingdom. For their part, the authority president and members expressed appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness for receiving them, lauding his directives to facilitate Ashura season processions and to conduct these religious rituals in safety and security. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today met with the U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, William Roebuck, and the outgoing U.S. Fifth Fleet Commander, Vice Admiral Kevin Dunnigan, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the long-standing ties between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States, noting both countries' commitment to strengthening cooperation across various fields. He went on to emphasize His Majesty King Hamad's ongoing support for advancing Bahraini-U.S. relations, which are vital to achieving both countries' shared interests and strategic goals. He recognized the important role of the U.S. Fifth Fleet in strengthening security cooperation efforts and stressed Bahrain's firm commitment to providing strategic support and boosting counterterrorism collaboration with its international and regional allies. The Crown Prince concluded by extending thanks and best wishes to Vice Admiral Dunnigan for his service in enhancing bilateral relations. He also welcomed the new U.S. Fifth Fleet Commander, Vice Admiral John Aquilino, wishing him success in his new role. The Ministry of Education's experiment of integrating hearing-impaired students into public schools has been proven successful, with students making tangible progress academically, psychologically and socially. The Minister of Education, Dr. Maja bin Ali al Naimi, expressed opened two new classes for this project in Isatown Secondary Boys' School and Al Noor Secondary Girls' School. The minister was briefed on the practical aspects of teaching the students after the ministry provided sign language specialists to translate what the, stu what the students and teachers say in the classrooms. Al Noemi announced that the ministry has increased the number of schools allocated for the integration of people with special needs to 77 schools. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Abdul Hussein Ali Mirza, inaugurated the first Energy Investment Forum and Exhibition yesterday morning at Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. The forum was organized by AGE Company in cooperation with Tamkin. It was attended by the Moroccan Ministry of Energy, Mines and Sustainable Development, Aziz Rabah, as well as a number of officials, experts in renewable energy, investment company representatives and manufacturers. Mirza delivered a speech thanking the wise leadership for its support and expressed appreciation to ministries, government authorities and businesses for sponsoring the event. He added that the forum enable small and medium enterprises to explore solar energy solutions that can be installed in factories, rooftops, parking lots and other spaces to benefit both the government and the private sector by decreasing the pressure on conventional energy sources provided by the state. 
He added that there are many attempts ongoing to diversify energy sources in Bahrain and the Gulf, particularly since the government opened a sustainable energy unit in 2014. He highlighted that alternative energy sources have an important eco-friendly economic dimension, pointing out that sustainable energy creates opportunities to work with the private sector to raise investment. Mirza also reviewed the achievements of the Sustainable Energy Unit, such as the preparation of the National Plan for Energy Conservation, which comprises 22 initiatives and projects to achieve the national target of 6% energy efficiency, as well as the Re National Renewable Energy Plan, which comprises seven major initiatives to achieve the national goal adopted by the Cabinet of a renewable energy ratio of 5% by 2025 and 10% by 2035. He also spoke of the other benefits of using renewable energy sources. AGE CEO Amir Al Hassan said in her speech that the forum will cover both the investment and technological aspects of using renewable energies. She hailed the support of the Electricity and Water Affairs Ministry, expressing thanks and appreciation to the minister for his patronage of the forum. Policymakers gathered today for the second International Institute for Strategic Studies (IISS) Geoeconomics Conference Bahrain Bay Forum, themed MENA Economies: Positioning for a New World Disorder held under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, which opened yesterday at the Four Seasons Hotel. More details in this report with Heba Abdul Ghaffar. The IISS Bahrain Bay Forum debates MENA economy's adjustment to a changing world order. More than 200 business leaders, government officials and economic analysts from the US, Europe, Asia and the wider Middle East gathered to face the challenges of a new world order, shaped by the world's geopolitical changes. The shifts are huge and ongoing, and the distinguished experts are sharing expectations and analysis. Uh, China is heading for its 19th party congress. We don't quite know where Chinese politics is heading, and we are uncertain about the Chinese economy. Uh, President Trump is going to speak to the UN General Assembly on Tuesday. It will be interesting to see if he follow some sort of script there or not um, and then of course we are concerned with some of the development that we see in the Middle East. We discussed this, um, the possibilities and the challenges and the risks and it's quite uh, interactive and very fruitful and also we discussed the uh, economy, the current recovery and regionally the, uh, the development, the challenge, the future. Just to give you the numbers. Against the backdrop of a more competitive landscape and impending macroeconomic challenges, the forum aims to suggest ways in which governments can formulate effective domestic policy responses on structural reforms and resource mobilization strategies to accommodate large deficits and development financing needs. Private sector involvement, private sector um, competition, um, and attracting um, investors, both domestic and international to the region. Uh, one of the great things about low oil prices and um, economic recession is that it's an ideal environment for reform. We all need energy, but there's financial and professional services, there's the infrastructure, and, and there's all sorts of things like tertiary education to look at. So countries uh, all around in the region, in the GCC particularly, have so much to offer for incoming and outgoing investment. And that's what I'm here to learn about today. Great speakers, great conference. Sessions by unique speakers discuss drivers of energy markets, the climate change agenda, required policy adjustments, and ways to reshape economic and trade ties with strategic economic partners, notably China. Yeah, I'm a London-based uh, emerging market focus investor. Uh, it's called uh, Aberdeen Asset Management. So for us, it's really important that to come here and meet a lot of uh, policymakers and thought leaders, the locals, and try to understand what is going on locally. The forum is a great opportunity to researchers and decision makers in public and private sectors to harness the benefits of this critical phase. The second IISS Bahrain Bay Forum brings together a distinguished panel of officials and experts to analyze the changing geopolitical landscape for economic, energy and trade policies, as well as business strategy. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour.
A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohamed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,300.02 points, marking a decrease of 3.76 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and investment sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 60.44% of total shares. 84 transactions included 2,363,620 shares, worth 488,241 Bahraini dinars.